Hi, everybody. Welcome to week nine. Two more weeks to go. Yay. This is Kelly, your instructor, and I'm going to provide musculoskeletal alterations, impaired mobility. That includes osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, spinal cord injuries, immunity, and rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. Let's begin. We'll start with mobility. So alterations in mobility, module 13, um, can lead to other health alterations, atelectasis and pneumonia, so fluid buildup in the lungs, uh, decreased GI mobility or motility, and paralytic ileus, <clears throat> impaired tissue perfusion, or pressure injuries from not moving around much. Some health promotion, um, good lifestyle habits, vital to preventing bone, muscle, or joint problems, good nutrition, and regular exercise help. Modifiable risk factors include obesity. Um, excess weight puts a lot of strain on the joints. Um, maternal nutrition before birth, uh, folic acid helps well-balanced diet. Nursing assessment, uh, we can gather information to assess musculoskeletal dysfunction. Um, pain, limited mo mobility, we wanna watch or wanna assess for. Um, we wanna assess for fatigue, weight changes, and inflammation. <clears throat> Observation and patient interview, that's always a big one. Observe the patient's ambulation, including gait, uneven or uneven gait, balance, difficulty bearing weight, signs of pain. Patient history is always important. You're always going to do a patient history, no matter what um, system we're working on. <clears throat> um, lifestyle activities of daily living, sports, nutrition. Are there responsibilities you require assistance at home? Um, are there barriers for you to return home? Uh, pain, medications, and interventions to relieve pain, onset severity, timing and symptoms, and factors that increase or decrease mobility. And I'll probably skim through a few of these because we have about 64 slides. Physical assessment includes inspecting the palpating bones, muscles, and joints, and assess range of motion. Neurovascular, assess the five Ps, pain, pulses, pallor, paresthesia, paralysis, or paresia. I'll let you read these. Paresis, paresis, that's it. <clears throat> Diagnostic tests include blood tests, so these here. A few imaging tests, including CTs and MRIs and ch chest x-rays. Um, other tests include nerve conduction test or joint aspiration. See if there's any infection going on. And osteoarthritis is next. Example 13E. So osteoarthritis is a degeneration of cartilage and bone in the joints, a normal process of aging due to wear and tear of the joints, most commonly affecting knees, hips, hands, and spine. Ankles and joints can be involved, especially with people that are overweight. Some clinical manifestations include um, mild symptoms, prog progressively worsening, depending on the joint affected. Uh, joint pain is going to be a big one. <clears throat> Worsens with activity and relieved by rest. Pain, stiffness associated with prolonged inactivity, such as sleeping or taking a nap or taking a long car ride. Tenderness to touch. I'll let you read these other ones. 
assessments. Again, observe and uh, interview the patient. Um, evaluate movement, ambulation, need for assistant devices, signs of pain. Family history is always big. And physical exam includes joint assessment, pain, deformities, and nodes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Diagnostic tests include x-ray, MRI, blood tests, and joint fluid. A few nursing diagnoses include pain, chronic uh, mobility, physically impaired, sedentary lifestyle, self-care deficit, knowledge deficit. Planning or the patient's goals that we want to add to our care plan understanding analgesic medications, non-pharmacological pain techniques, rest, perform range of motion exercises, and these other ones. We talked about that. I think I just forgot to delete it. Some pharmacological therapies include acetaminophen, which is the first line therapy, um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, or naproxen, opiates for severe osteoarthritis pain, or cortisone injections are relatively common. Let's see, nursing diagnosis. I think we've already went through nursing diagnosis. I'll leave this up just for, oh, implementation. Uh, nursing diagnosis for mobility um, assess mobility, um, assess functional ability, teach exercise guidelines, a couple of other things here. Uh, implementation for knowledge deficit. I'll let you read this. Um, some implementation, decrease pain, promote mobility, teach device use. Let's see, pain management, monitor and describe pain. Use mild analgesics. We already talked about that. I'll let you read the, the rest. Uh, surgery, um, used for severe arthritis. Arthroscopy um, for debridement of some of the stuff that's in the joints. <clears throat> joint irrigation. So fluid injection in the joint may be combined with arthroscopy. Joint resurfacing. Small amount of bone removal. Metal replacement is fitted over end of bone. And arthroplasty, total joint replacement. <clears throat> Osteoarthritis or uh, osteoporosis, excuse me. I know I was pretty close. Uh, metabolic skeletal disorder, um, known as porous bones, is reduced bone mass and causes increased bone fragility, leading to risk of fractures. Bone loss through a remodeling process, and you can read that here affects approximately 54 million Americans <clears throat> with about 2 million bone fractures a year. That's a lot. Some nursing care focuses on prevention, recognition, and treatment. Um, key nursing activities, patient education is always sort of on the top. Health promotion, uh, medication administration, pain relief, and teaching lifestyle changes. Assessment includes collecting data through health history and physical exam, observe and patient interviews, gather information on risk factors, history of fractures, lifestyle, and use the FRAX tool or the DXA to assess fracture risk. And you can look those up in your book. Nursing diagnosis includes potential for injury, inadequate nutrition, acute pain is a big one, Oops, sorry about that. A little too fast. 
goal prevention or goal is pre prevent falls. Um, I'll let you read the rest of these here. <clears throat> Implementation for preventing injury. Ensure safe environment. Assist with assistive devices. Referral to physical therapy and perform safety checks. Um, promoting balanced nutrition implementation. Explain the role of vitamin D and calcium on bone absorption. <clears throat> Identify calcium rich foods. Optimize vitamin D sources. Provide dietary consult. Relieving acute pain, refer to physical therapy. Try to use, discuss uh, non-pharmacological methods and explain NSAID use. Ibuprofen, naproxen. Encourage exercise implementation. Um, obtain exercise prescription. Individualize exercise program, including weight bearing and muscle strengthening exercises. Implementation for promoting healthy behaviors, advise against smoking, excessive coffee and alcohol use, and set realistic goals. <clears throat> Develop medication schedule, encourage follow up appointments and refer to support organizations. Evaluation, evaluate outcomes regularly, and then adjust as you need to. Assess medication adherence and side effects. Expected outcomes include lifestyle changes, improved nutrition, safety, awareness, and pain relief. All right, so we're moving on to spinal cord injuries. And we're not gonna go hugely in depth into this. Um, often caused by trauma, um, results in from vertebrae or objects pressing against spinal cord, damages nerve cells, disrupts nerve impulse transmission between body and brain, a uh, range of outcomes, um, muscle weakness to complete loss of sensory and motor function, approximately 18,000 new cases per year in the U.S. And nursing care for these types of patients, uh, collaborative among experts in various fields of, is essential. Nurse is a vital team member. Nursing care encompasses emergency care, acute care, and rehabilitation. And focuses on stabilization, complications prevention, self-care promotion, education, and community safety. Assessments include health history and physical assessment, traumatic event details, symptoms, and medications, a neurologic exam per the ASIA standards, check that out, the vital signs, respiratory status, EBGs, reflex, reflexes, bowel and bladder function, and pain assessment. Uh, nursing diagnosis include airway aspiration or aspiration for airway, breathing patterns, uh, dysreflexia, mobility impairment, pain, self-care difficulties, and mental health issues. <clears throat> Planning includes maintaining airway, optimized swallowing muscles, uh, clear breath sounds, avoid dysphagia, or dyspnea, manage reflex, dysreflexia triggers, improve mobility, and I'll let you watch these, or read the rest of these. Implementation, so there's a few different phases. Immediate care is assist with ventilation, immobilization, wound care, bladder control care, or bladder and bowel control. Recovery phase, mobility assistance, exercise, self-care complication prevention, and rehabilitation resources or referrals. Community interventions for suspected 
spinal cord injury, um, assess responsiveness, call for help, maintain precautions, assess airway, provide initial care. Emergent and urgent problems uh, focus on immobility, airway, vital sign monitoring. Address non-life-threatening injuries like wound care, fractures, bladder bowel control, nursing interventions, range of motion exercises, uh, turning, catheter and pouch care, coughing, and compression stockings, and consider referrals or therapy referrals, referrals and support. <clears throat> provide assistance with ADLs, assist with self-care, monitor vital signs, assess complications, regular respiratory and neurological assessments, uh, complication preventions while you read that, initiate physical occupational therapy referrals. Immunity, module eight. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go over the nursing process on this one. Immunity, system, diversity, and scattered nature. All right, let me start over on that one. This is just a nursing assessment overview. Um, I'll let you read some of these. Uh, so observation, observation and patient interview, <clears throat> review biological data, uh, compare apparent stated age, uh, general appearance, family history is important due to, due to genetic component. Sensitive questions require privacy and trust. Build trust before sensitive inquiries. Questions may cover immunization, infections, family history, etc. Uh, tailor terms, examples to patients. The nursing assessment for immunocompromised patients, high, higher infection, disease risk based on immunosuppression degree, monitor infections, non-infectious manifestations. I'll let you read the rest of these. A physical exam, assess height, weight, body type for wasting. Check vital signs, elevated temperature suggests infection or inflammation. <clears throat> Diagnostic tests include all of these. I'll let you read all of this. <clears throat> Immunity health promotion. Uh, preventing immune disorders and infectious disease through vaccines and risk factor management. Educate patients on, about modifiable, modifiable risk factors. Encourage routine vaccination for improved population health. And there are a lot of mo modifiable risk factors. I'll just read a couple of these. Protein energy, malnutrition, lipid, vitamin, or lipid, vitamin, Mineral deficiencies impair immune response. Nutrition linked to food allergies in children. Uh, chronic stress suppresses immune response. <clears throat> Alcohol, drugs, cigarette use increase immune disease uh, sus susceptibility. Unprotected sex, multiple partners increase HIV risk. Vaccines, uh, breakthrough in modern medicine. Um, routine immunizations for 16 diseases in newborns. And I'll let you read the rest of these. Immunizations in children. Vaccines based on transplacental immunity. Antibody development. Immunization started between age two and 18 months. 
catch-up immunizations available if missed at recommended age, adolescence, or <clears throat> um, encouraged to get the HPV vaccine, meningococcal vaccines are recommended. Responses to vaccines, up to 50% recipients have local reactions. <clears throat> Systemic reactions like fever, fussiness can occur. Uh, serious reactions are rare, like anaphylaxis, throat closing, and encephalopathy, swelling in the brain. Um, guidelines for managing expected mild reactions. And there's vaccine hesitancy and trust. You got to want to vaccine uh, vaccine hesitancy is a public health threat according to the book and reasons include safety concerns beliefs experiences and i'll let you read the rest of these consent and administration <clears throat> a nurse is responsible for informing, obtaining consent, providing literature, legal obligation to ensure proper consent, parental consent, adolescent consent based on state laws, and nurses' role in immunization administration is crucial. All right, moving from immunization to rheumatoid arthritis, which is sort of in the same section. Chronic uh, systemic Autoimmune disorder caused, okay, let me start over. So rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic systemic autoimmune disorder causing connective tissue inflammation. Got it. Uh, variable course and severity, both from mild to markedly deformed. Symmetric involvement of multiple joints, periods of remission and exacerbation, uh, coping with chronic pain, body image changes, modified tools for ADLs, and holistic care addresses physical, psychosocial, or safety needs, or and safety needs. A little bit of pathophysiology, um, long-term exposure to unidentifiable, unidentified antigen triggers, abnormal uh, immune response. Autoantibodies, or rheumatoid factors, attack host tissues. Leukocytes infiltrate synovial membranes. Uh, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes increase inflammation. And synovial members, or membranes swell, thicken, and vascular flow decreases. <clears throat> um, could be from hypoxia, metabolic acidosis, release of hydrolyte enzymes, erosion of articular cartilage, ligaments, tendons, damage from activated synovial fluid cells or cytokines, panis tissue formation, panis leads to scar tissue, joint immobilization. I can hardly talk. So the nursing process includes assessment, observed and patient interview for history and diagnosis. <clears throat> patient examination includes joint assessment, skin respiratory, skin respiratory, and cardiovascular. Nursing diagnosis um, includes identify patient needs and priorities based on rheumatoid arthritis problems. May include chronic pain, fatigue, impaired role performance. Planning or goals include individualized outcome based on patient needs, effective pain management, improved ADLs, and emotional coping. Implementation focuses on mobility promotion, nutrition and disease management. Patient-centered care always leads to improved healthcare experience and outcomes, you know, if the patient is susceptible to that. Implementation for encouraging self-management, 
We want to promote exercise, rest, weight management, and posture. <clears throat> now use tools and equipment to prevent pain and injury. Joint protection techniques to prevent deformities. Monitor and treat chronic pain. Uh, monitor or pain monitoring and morning stiffness assessment. Relate pain to activity and adjust accordingly. And teach heat cold applications. Anti-inflammatory meds and non-pharmacological non -pharmacological pain relief. Uh, preventing fatigue. Again, balance activity and rest. Prioritize activities. Encourage regular physical activity and range of motion exercise. <clears throat> Address anemia, muscle atrophy, oxygenation, and nutrition. Three slides left. Address inadequate role performance. Discuss effects of disease on roles. Encourage adaptation. Validate feelings and identify coping strengths and strategies for maintaining self-esteem. Promoting healthy body image. Encourage discussion of physical and role effects. Ooh. Maintain self-care. Provide adaptive devices. Connect patients with support groups and agencies. <coughs> So implementation for providing support for compromised mobility include encourage ADL active, or performance, medi medication use and compressions, physical therapy for joint function and prevention of deformities, and occupational therapy for activity of daily living assistance <clears throat> and using adaptive tools. And the evaluation, ongoing evaluation of nursing care and plan effectiveness, and then change is needed. Expected outcomes are joint mobility, maintenance, comfort, and positive body image. Secondary outcomes are medication use, stress management, and an active care role. And that's it. Finish all of your reading if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for case studies.